Choices Prologue by yours truly. Which you too, by the way. I'm just another point of view. How does one begin to explain things that are so far removed from programmed thinking in such a way as to even begin using words to say it, let alone expect acceptance of it? Where does one start to outline the mental traps and pitfalls laid out so clearly once one begins this so-called journey of truth and self? How do you tell a programmed Christian or any other religious zealot that they're actually flowing energy to the very dark forces they purport to loathe? Benevolence doesn't come to you in robes, uniforms, and pageantry. It comes completely naked with nothing to hide. It doesn't serve itself first and then claim to be benevolent because it shares only table scraps from the food you provided. That is a realm of malevolence, deceit, control, and quite simply, purest evil, the mirror and, and <coughs> excuse me, and antithesis of live. And what are those that serve this darkest of intentions? What are we <coughs> excuse me, what are we to say to expose them when the vastness of humanity has been duped for so very long? under shrouds of secrecy and deliberate misinformation. How easy is it for someone that actually has benevolent intentions, going along to get along in the mother of all tricks, Matrix, to accept truth that flies 180 degrees in the face of their pre-programmed realities? How does one try to expose the very program that is in full force and effect controlling their minds to defend this very program with some literally to the death? Truth be known, you don't. <laughs> you simply plant the seeds that only true spirit hears and walk away. It took a while, but I no longer have the concern I used to for these most willing to hear truth beings, uh, where, if it is their wish to fall, I let them. It matters not to me who they are in relation to me, as I learned in the contrast that I mattered not to them anyway. Live and let die after all. It was this very concern on my part that led to the most painful of lessons in order that I may finally see this unconditional truth. My value to humanity will be measured in deeds, not material stuff that is the norm for those caught in these webs of deception. If they are simply too blind to see, it's not up to me to pry their eyes open. It is up to them if they are meant to and ultimately worthy of this most difficult of spiritual tasks. It is quite the trap here, in that we all, <clears throat> we all have lived this physical existence, running on information devised to keep the mind versus the heart in control of the reality. I see the system worshippers and enablers in the same way I remember a kid that loved to beat frogs to death with a dog brush, slowly. Fortunately, I never witnessed this pure evil, but rather only sickened by it. This is the same mindset the majority of our supposed law keepers act in, whether they are robed, suited, or uniformed. It's all the same psychotic beast to me. I see anyone who allows or creates suffering of another in the same light as the Roman guards relentlessly flogging and whipping the Christ in the passion of the Christ. The religions have done well to encapsulate a state of being in a singular meat stick that is somehow coming to save them. Honestly, if you experience that level of spiritual and physical flogging, would you be so willing to let go? This was and is the real lesson that was being shown, yet the supposed duped religiocosis chosen itis types would be the first ones to condemn you, steal what they can from you, and in the end, justifier, blame you for all their woes. This is exactly what one can expect from those you are trying to awaken to this lesson to set them free. I have learned that slaves love to be slaves. It requires no courage to be one. Just the same as a slave, one must piss the master off too much. A slave must go along to get along or get whipped or executed if they don't. Regardless, every slave must be a willing participant in their own slavery, lest the system fails completely. A slave must be well conditioned with physical fear in order for it to be controlled, so well conditioned that they do these things gleefully thinking that they are actually free. While one master exists, so must a slave exist also. This program is easy to spot and as simple as being a tad disgruntled because someone is stealing from you and have the nerve to tell you that that is normal and that you must accept this. 
This is why the illusion of an external government exists at all. With governments come their police, their militaries, their robber barons, their lords, their mayors, and all manner of psychopathy to keep a slave in order. It only works because of the lack of responsibility most lack and act in a typical childlike manner they do. The supposed governments on this planet are just to place giants in this planetary game of let's play house on a global scale. As I recall, I don't remember Henry Ford going to any Ministry of Transportation to get a license to drive his first car, and nor do I remember Orville and Wilbur Wright doing likewise. They simply did their thing. Humanity reminds me of the child in school putting up their hand to ask permission to pee as if the psychotic control indoctrinated teachers uh, controlled that most basic of natural laws. Your body decides if it has to pee, nothing else. I have exposed too many things on too many occasions regarding what feigned power these behind-the-curtain wizards actually have, and it totals out, and after rounding it out as well, to an absolute zero. Nada. Zilch. Nothing. Zero. Sweet fuck all. Period. So controlled are so many that the mere mention of truth has them pulling out their cat of nine tails in fear, drooling with glee to whip you, and all the while using pre-programmed justifier reasons as to why they must. Truth shorts out the program, and the program is not happy. I have wasted countless hours with so many one-on-one to expose the fact is true, and why I don't even bother anymore. You cannot negotiate with insanity, and you cannot reason with liars and thieves. This is the insanity of those still messing about in the legal romper rooms, like free men or sovereign citizens. Sorry, patriot types. Guns don't solve shit either, and only lends itself to deeper and darker responsibilities of possibly killing a spirit-filled human versus an already spiritually dead bioborg. Are you aware enough to spot the difference yet? If one's emotions control their mind, that ability to be is blinded because only in a neutral observer position can you begin to even understand the difference, let alone spot it. Humanity is rife with dead biocomputers soulless and empty, but they look and act like normal human beings. This is why I know the supposed world leaders are nothing but these walking dead bioborg, without any sense of spirituality, because if they were otherwise, wars would not exist, nor would money, religion, politics, courts, police, militaries, or anything resembling this system infesting our world around us. The instant any politician or the like calls to war and stands front row and center on the front line as the first to die, I may start to reconsider after they're seen to not be another patsy. It is my wish that I can move hearts enough to stand in truth against all odds, in defiance of their own programmed minds. It is my wish to show others that if one is hurt, we are all hurt in kind. Most of the talking heads of humanity sell wonderful snake oil with pre-scripted scenes designed to lull humanity into thinking that they and only they know what's best for everyone as the next fear porn scene flashes across the TV screens. They paint one side as evil and ramp up the how good and free you are, and before you know it, you're marching down the main street of a city claiming victory after the murder of millions, waving one flag or another that I see as unworthy to wipe even Satan's ass. Unfortunately, the cold hard truth is not easy to see, and even more difficult to accept, let alone stand in. It requires one to stand in defiance of all things rammed down your gullets as normal society, where the more easily managed slaves are grabbing their pitchforks, whips, and guns in the same way as the mobs in the aforementioned movie. I've wanted to do a write-up on this movie, and I suppose that is what this is. For those that have seen it, how sickened were you observing humanity represented as a whole in this allegory? A kudos to Mel Gibson for making this so gut-wrenchingly excruciating to watch and literally experience. This is the same gut-wrenchingly excruciating, painful experience every truth seeker has had to endure, mostly from the ones closest to you, your family, your friends, and those that serve the system of their own slavery. I think the toughest part about this is simply just knowing this. You have been left for dead. Ridiculed, hated, stolen from, targeted for rumors, lied to and lied about, and so on. You have been hung by those you tried to help. You have been abandoned by those you love. And the only question I know you likely asked was, why? 
But you already knew that answer. And it lay in the striving for unconditional love, which is the no compromising where matters of truth, pure truth and heart are concerned. You did so and do so because you know no other way but that most lonely of roads that few find and even fewer walk. I've come across so many people that started out on this road but dropped off to oblivion the instant their own fears smothered the truth they claimed to seek. That is what I call conditional truth, in that I will stand in truth until it costs me or doesn't suit my own selfish desires and vengeance upon others. That is where I see most, if not all those in the system and free man psychosis. The insanity of that is the same as going up against a tank with a Nerf gun. No, no, truth is not a convenience or a means to winning. It is the only thing that destroys all system programs and their masters. Truth is the ongoing evolution of self-manifest spirit, a journey of purification that separates the wheat from the slugs that feed on it. In it, no one can control you, manipulate you, or more importantly, parasite your living field, which is their only source of life. This is why respawn's ability of self far exceeds anything these psychotic aspects of a dead consciousness can muster, because without you, they are dead, and they know it. All this poison needs to keep it alive and flowing is your agreement your spiritual contract of simple acceptance and nothing more. Yes, it is that easy. That is where attention flows. Oh, sorry. That where attention flows, energy goes. Energy being the inner G hex or the inner hex and G O S is the hexes of creation. So have a look at how attention, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, have, so have a look at, at how attention you literally pay to this poison shetty, or how much attention rather. Typo, all good. Hey, I type in a hurry. Anyway, uh, shetty is a term I use for dead, soulless, bioborg meat sticks, the mimics of humanity, the copyrights. I have watched, counted, and measured all the Judases in my own life in the contrast of pain and gratitude, where those with souls know not what they do due to the spiritual and mental infestation of an aptly named Cyst M. So I know this. Those she, however, are the doomed and the banished from consciousness, never to return. In short, they've had their thousand years to find their own souls and failed. I mean, seriously, how many kicks at the can does one need to get it? I offer the same mercy offered me fully in your mirrors. Where no quarter was offered, nor shall quarter be given. Those that make rules are now compelled to obey them. And there is, after all, only one, and that puppy is golden. They won't get it because they can't. They are the last bastions of evil, soulless, without remorse. And in the golden rule, their wish is now granted, and the law of truth cannot be more beautiful than that. How do I know this? Well, it's easy, because never a peep gets returned to anything I send to the dead of our realm, because they can't answer. Truth and responsibility cannot be mimicked, copied or manifested from a dead consciousness, because it's dead. Why do you think their system is one based entirely on dead things, like corpse, dead body, military corpse, corp orations, cops, silent, or no R, thus no, no spirit breath creation ability? and made to sound exactly the same as core, which is heart, and core, which is the true center. When you are part of their core, corpse, your heart is sonically spelled dead. Literally, and all your creation ability is no longer yours, willfully given to another in full knowing or ignorance of knowing. I'm only concerned with those that are ignorant of this truth, where the rest are doomed to non-existence anyway by their own choice. I will not trespass free will choice by anyone or anything. If you wish love upon all, it reflects back perfectly. If you wish harm on one, you wish it on all accordingly. And why the insanity of those playing nerf balls with tanks are only manifesting their own doom as well. No. The truth seeker's road is not an easy one, given the decrepit nature of this world and humanity as a whole. But it is the only road out of the long dead Rome and all its evil servants. Can you handle this road? 
are you willing to once and for all stand in full knowing of who and what you are? Can you endure the mindless slings and arrows from the walking asleep and walking dead alike? Are you strong enough to stand in defiance of all the evil this world propagates? Do the children halfway around the world matter as much as your perceived own? The sheer lunacy of claiming to own a child, any child, is exactly the same mirror of why children are enslaved in the first place. Take the time and spot the spiritual contract here that binds all children and why I see all living spiritual humanity as just another point of me, with all the jetty or shite removed once and for all. Start thanking all your religious friends for keeping the dream of wars alive because without their zealotry and hatred of other religions, this could not be possible. Thank them for so vigorously whipping you while you were down because you rose from their shite-infested manure spreading. Give them a great big hug for worshipping their satanic masters and serving the beast so diligently because in that contrast you find the true meaning of the state of being called Christ Consciousness. The same thing many ancient masters taught and were murdered for. Have them look at themselves as the mobs calling for the release of Barabbas a known murderer while the messenger of true consciousness gets flailed and nailed to death. Dare them to see their respective clergy as the very same Pharisees and scribes running from crucifixion, knowing full well the measure of what it cost them, their souls. That moment of realization of truth that they have long denied to serve their personal lusts and greed comes upon them like a thief in the night. It will be in that moment that they will realize how far they fell and to equally realize that they must also endure the same crucifixions that we have <clears throat> sorry that we have to find our that we have had to to find our way home i would actually feel pity on them had i not spent years and countless pains endured to get this message to them which fell on deaf ears until the doors to the true ark finally closes circuit complete i cannot pity those that time after time inflict pain showing no remorse no compassion as they went busily about their days looking for new targets to satiate their sadistic lusts. They are the child rapists, the master thieves, the deceived deceivers of themselves. They are the pinnacles of this society, the so-called elites, the money whores, the religion whores, and all manner of the claiming to lead society and the blight upon consciousness itself. They are your clergy, your mayors, your police chiefs and captains your rank-and-file politicians, your duped teachers and professors who spew well-indoctrinated and carefully cultivated shite, empowering the reality of this loathsome planet systems. No, I choose truth at all costs. I will not bed this whore, nor will I feed at one single agreement on any level where this beast has marked itself for execution long ago, foretold, and now coming to bear. These are the choices we all must make and ultimately stand in, if we rid this place of the poisons of a corrupted mind, heart, and soul. If you are not for the truth absolute, then by definition you are against it. I continue telling everyone that this road is not easy, nor should it be. It is, however, simple, with its rewards and consequences mirrored in equal and opposite singularity, where choosing the physical temptations in a body-stuck reality, or one of infinite spiritual existence. I choose the latter where this physical reality is merely another step to climb back home. This is the difference between recycling or recycling in the mere ego round until you have lost all sense of soul or pushing through the last contractions and rebirthing your own reality, removing these psychos and their servant min mini ions from consciousness altogether. I am the master of my fate, the captain of my soul, as so perfectly stated by W.E.H. Way, William Ernst Henley. Yes, William, there is only one way after all. I'll share the poem I live by here as, <clears throat> as well called Invictus. This poem was still hanging on my door when I went back home two weeks after being kidnapped by Shetty Minions and served as a reminder and inspiration during the 28 days this filth held me in solitary. Hey, Humpty, if you can't handle the truth, then get off my fucking wall. Easy peasy. Was in love, yours truly. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. 
Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. William Ernst Henley. <laughs> 